And we arrived back just in time for the doody bugs. They were I, the... I loved it. I loved doing it. I'll do it again if I got sick. It's so... It dies with death. He got away with it, he got away with it. And the army all got burnt during the blitz. And they didn't have anything else. I think, how did it? He did get wounded, he had a bullet, a bullet go through him. Come, what, of us three, opposite St John's Church, in, which is now Roman Road, we'd all start forming the queue, all the boys and the girls and that. And then, about half past five, they'd open, the, they'd open the doors and you'd run down the stairs. You'd be in school when the raid started again, the bombing started. And we'd be told to go down to the uh, shelter, take your books and all that with you. And I used to, used to forget. And we'd get down the shelter and because you couldn't have a lesson because we didn't have books and that. but. I don't think it did me any harm. When it first came, they said I was nine years old, so I mean, but me, me mother was always terrified. She used to sit in the, uh, the Anderson shelter with her fingers in her ears. Sometimes the raids used to be all night, they used to be coming and going all night long. When we got there, there was a queue of people. No pushing, no shoving, nothing. We just got on the queue and started moving up. And the searchlights went up. Now, I'm not going to say if there was any planes about. I can't, that I cannot remember, but I can remember the search, looking up and the searchlights were crossing each other. We, we was running to this shelter. So we got going down, we were going down Roman Road about a couple of hundred yards before we got there, the sky opened up. So my mother said, so I, I, me, my sister and my cousin and me, you three run in front, which is what we did. We knew then that we had to go through Victoria Park Square and we ran, started running. Me and Lily started running because we knew that all, because well, once the guns opened up, the shells had burst and you get the shrapnel coming down. Well, that shrapnel could be just as bad as a bomb. Like rockets. It sounded like hundreds of rockets going up. It was awful. We'd never heard anything like it before. And that was when people started Pushing. And I got to the third stair from the bottom. I was nearly down. And then these people who were falling pushed me up against the wall. And there was, I don't know, there must have been children, there must have been grown ups, there must, but I got pushed against that wall. And I can remember falling over something. And my sister grabbing hold of me and dragging me up, which was good of her because we didn't used to get on very well. <laughs> um, I mean, I was 11, she was 16. And she could see my plight. I've oh, got my hands on, oh, like that. And then what she done, she moved, moved across the landing and the first thing she done was grab the air. She pulled and I didn't come. I just screamed more, because you didn't have bleeding hurt. And then, um, oh, 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 get out. Then, what she done, she leaned over and put her arms underneath my arms and laid herself back and just yanked me out of there. And with her strength, she pulled me clear. I must have stepped on bodies, I must have, I must have stepped on someone. And she pulled me right out of there. And she got me down. She sat me down on the landing. And she went whoosh, down. And she said, and I can see her finger now. She went, you go downstairs and you say nothing what is happening here. Do you hear me? Nothing. I was saying then he, the policeman took hold of me and he took took me up the stairs and when he when I looked round they, they was all the bodies that was behind me was all lined up along the pavement right put you know the bus stop that go right past the bus stop they were lined all the way along there right past that bus stop all the dead bodies didn't know they were dead we didn't know they were dead till the next day he got to St James Aless and he walked round the bodies. 
and there was Lil lying there, and there was Vera. But Vera couldn't be recognised. She was so badly humiliated. The only way they could recognise her. Although it was given out that none of this was to be made public, him working at the Admiralty Depot, it came over on their wire. And because he's dropped everything, I don't even know where the depot was, but he got himself down to Bethnal Green Tube and he was down there pulling out the dead, looking for us. Anyway, we've got home to virtually to our house in Old Ford Road and a policeman who lived just up the road, he came out, he was just going back on duty up at the tube so he said come in here he said my wife will make you a cup of tea so we've gone in there I can't even remember his name Alf something anyway he's gone further up the road and he's found my dad coming home and my dad said he couldn't find us he said it's all right he said he's in our house they're in our house having a cup of tea and my dad's evidently collapsed so he's got him back to our house or his house and dad come in big hugs and kisses a lot of tears, but what struck me most of all was my dad crying his eyes out. I couldn't get over it. My big strong dad, what's he crying for? My dad went there and he, 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 he went and had a look and he came and he said, I found Iris, she's dead. So my aunt says, Where's, did you see Barbara? He says, no, he says, well, so I found Iris, I couldn't go no more. So she said, I'm going to go. So my dad said to Alfie, no, he was the 18 year old way to go in the army. He said to me, Alfie, Elf, don't let your arm go. He said, because it's not a very nice sight. Because all the bodies, all the bodies are laying in, in the mortuary, in the makeshift mortuary in the church. So Elfie went there he, and he says, he was walking walking along all the bodies. He said, they were showing me all the bodies. He said, I looked down, he says, he said, I can see a little pair of black paint and shoes sticking out the bottom of one of them. He said, can I see that one? So the man says, yeah, certainly. So he showed him it. It was Barbara. When Vera Trotter and Lil Trotter, when her husband found out about it, that they were both dead, he was serving in Egypt. And they turned around, and the authorities turned around and said to him, you're not going home, you've got nothing to go home to. How hard can you get... His wife and child had been killed. And I think a couple of nights later we went back down and slept down the tube when the warning went. And that's what we did virtually right until the, well, right until the end of the war. We still went down there. I mean, a lot of people had to because they had no homes to go to. It was the only place they could go to sleep. There was no bombs dropped. And the cause of the accident was the searchlight in the Bethnal Green Gardens. No searchlight, no guns, and everybody would have walked down that tube, same as any other night. It's something you never forget for the rest of your life. I can still hear my mother telling the three of us to go on in front. <laughs>